Hi everybody, uh, my name is Michael Dunnett from the Tide TV team here at Informa Connect. I'm joined today by Scott Mers, Business Development Manager of Asahi Kasai Bioprocess America, who's going to be discussing oligo equipment manufacturing. Welcome, Scott. Hi, great. Thanks to meet you, Michael. Thank you. First question up today, where do we see oligo manufacturing growth, domestically, Europe or in Asia? Uh, why is there such growth? Uh, the growth is stemming from matur maturation of the industry. Uh, the success is due to the pharmaceutical companies constantly improving their delivery mechanisms at the cellular level. Uh, right now, there are approximately 300 current FDA clinical trials just for antisense and for siRNA therapies. Um, in addition to this, though, we are starting to see the messenger RNA uh, become into the headlines and into public's eye, and that's really the, the growth uh, the most recently right now. Uh, the pandemic itself has just been, I guess, good and bad for the industry. <laughs> Uh, but this is actually pushing governments uh, in various company and countries to invest their further invest in further synthetic drug development, which has also helped push the pharmaceutical companies to uh, revamp their R and D uh, programs and to start including more messenger RNA into their development, which has been again a great thing for us to have. Um, the market for all oligonucleotides is expected to reach six billion over uh, this calendar year, and projected to go to about 14 billion by 2026. Uh, the North American markets are the ones that are really drive in this current fiscal year, but uh, in, in the future years, the Asia Pacific market seems to be the ones that are actually pushing that 14 billion dollar um, uh, market there. Uh, but for Psychosite Bioprocess America. We've actually realized this growth about three to four years ago domestically. And now, more recently, we're starting to see it in the European space and now the Asian market as well. Um, this has been mainly in the CMO space we've been seeing the growth, but now we're starting to partner with uh, pharmaceutical companies directly and ex as they're expanding their own manufacturing capabilities as their uh, therapies, drug therapies, are moving through clinicals or becoming an approved drug therapy by itself. Uh, but we're trying to differentiate ourselves from our competitors by a number of different, by offering a number of products and equipment focused on oligonucleotide manufacturing and allowing our customers to find pretty much everything they need from one supplier from development all the way through manufacturing. Thank you. Another question. Uh, what are key considerations or potential pitfalls from an equipment perspective? that oligo manufacturers must keep in mind to achieve success? Um, as, most as most pharmaceutical manufacturing, there's a series of process operations that are involved as sequential steps. The manufacturing train relies on each process operation to seamlessly flow from one step to the next. And each process operation must operate and function as designed. Um, AKBA works closely with the manufacturer, either pharma or the pharma company or CMO, so that the manufacturer equipment meets these chemical capability. Sorry, meets the chemical compatibility of the process. For example, uh, there is a instance where we need to employ exotic materials other than stainless steel to ensure that the equipment will uh, will survive long term. Uh, the oligosynthesis process uses very harsh chemicals uh, that can cause equipment failure to if these details are overlooked. Uh, another example is understanding the process pressure. Um, yet another example is to ensure that the equipment is easy to maintain and that your supplier uh, has a robust supply chain for spares. Uh, unlike chromatography columns, th synthesis columns are broken down and routinely um, are going through their maintenance program. So the so the customer needs to have the benefit of having a, a simple design and also be able to purchase consumables fairly easily. And just building on that, um, are there different considerations for pharma companies versus CMOs? Um, well, no, not really, at least at the smaller scale. 
at that scale, the process is developed in the R&D space and then transferred to the PD space. And generally they're using the same equipment or very similar equipment. However, when you're going out to the manufacturing train, a pilot scale and beyond, the pharmaceutical company may itself have a uh, internal global standard of equipment or have a global equipment manufacturer partner that they are trying to align themselves with on a global scale. While on the CMO, they're typically looking for a purpose-built specific piece of equipment for their industry or for, uh, actually for that particular drug therapy project by itself. What are the challenges facing oligo manufacturing? purification and synthesis uh, equipment scale up? Um, the evolving industry has been driven by a number of changes to how the equipment is designed, both hardware and software. Uh, the increasing demand for higher, greater throughput, higher throughput from R&D through manufacturing has been driving equipment manufacturers to improve our technology. Uh, one of these challenges, the challenges is to design an oligonucleotide synthesizer so that a high coupling efficiency is achieved and realized. Uh, synthesis, synthesis chemicals are very expensive. So the synthesizer should be a simple design that has zero dead volume uh, to eliminate any amidite, uh, capping agents, or any flushing eluents from carrying over in between synthesis steps. Um, in addition to this, the overall synthetic process must remain moisture-free. Any moisture that's present will interact with the incoming monomers and instead of the support, uh, thereby re reducing your coupling efficiency. So having a closed system is ideal. Closed dry system is ideal. Um, another challenge is to ensure that the proper flow distribution uh, within the synthesis column. The flow distribution greatly affects coupling efficiency. Coupling efficiency <laughs> determines the overall length of an oligonucleotide chain, but also the, qual the final quality of the product um, and yield. A highly coupled, a highly coupled synthesis uh, sequence may have only a few or a low amount of impurities, while a uh, most a purely coupled sequence actually could have uh, quite high, uh, quite high level contaminant contaminant level. Um, the flow distribution also is very critical to a uh, purification process, a chromatography process. With any of those processes, the purification, however, actually is a very inefficient process in that it that's where your yield is lost at. But this yield that's being lost is actually due to how many impurities are actually in the product as you're, you're purifying it. And are the purification and synthesis columns Scalable. Yes, actually, manufacturing columns are very scalable. Uh, with the proper considerations taken above uh, in the previous uh, statement, the uh, a pilot scale process at a 10 centimeter column can easily be scaled to 80 centimeter, 100 centimeters, even larger if need be. Uh, that doesn't seem to be an issue. Uh, it is advisable, though, that the pharma company or CMO to use the same column manufacturer so that the flow distribution technology remains the same as you're scaling up. How important is it to have one common software communication platform in the oligo manufacturing space? And um, what would be the challenges to integrating these process operations? Um, there's a couple of schools of thought here, but I feel it's important to have a common communication platform that can be easily integrated with other equipment that's seamlessly tied to the central DCS of the facility. Uh, there are a number of different DCS platforms that are globally installed um, within manufacturing uh, facilities. A common communication software, common communication protocol across these three, these different platforms, however, is called OLA for Process Control or OPC. By having your manufacturing equipment software uh, OPC ready, allows for the manufacturing equipment to easily communicate with the DCS system. This also happens to be one of the goals of the new Pharma 4.0 initiative as well. In your opinion, where does the greatest potential for oligo development lie in regards to global health impact? 
Um, the greatest potential lies in the amazing drug therapies that are currently out there, um, and that's on ones that are also in development as well. Uh, for example, inclycerin is designed to lower cholesterol, but rather take a daily pill. It's it reduces it to a simple injection twice a year, which is improving patient experience. Um, we're also seeing how messenger RNAs can be developed into life-saving vaccines. And there seems to be promise that oligos could treat genetic disorders, such as sickle cell anemia, muscle dystrophy, and, and the other ones out there. Wonderful. Scott, thank you so much for your time today. Um, that was a really, really insightful interview on this latest edition of, uh, of Tides TV. And uh, yeah, wish you uh, the best for the rest of the year. Any final comments you'd like to make? No, I appreciate your time and thank you very much for allowing us to have this conversation. I look forward to seeing uh, this and others on the TV. Fantastic. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much.